I don't think it's possible for individuals with disabilities to uh, obtain full citizenship without adopting quality standards that are based on universal human aspirations. I think we must norm quality then on those everyday freedoms that we all take for granted. Otherwise, we will revert, especially in the United States, to the industrial J.D. Powers definition of quality and success, and that is satisfaction with human services instead of pursuing a meaningful life in the community. What follows, and I will keep this short, can be found in more depth than in a book that is going to be published soon, I hope, uh, called The Threshold of Freedom. And the title is very deliberate, as you might imagine, uh, because we're not there yet. But that's where we have to go. And it's my writings and lectures uh, for the last 25 years, my journey, if you will, uh, in self-determination. I do have at least one paper in the syllabus, I think, which sums up a lot of the issues. Uh, it's called Lost Lives. Uh, and that uh, is a little more direct uh, and less polite than I intend to be here. The meaning of self-determination in the United States has evolved, in our view, to encompass three levels of change, the personal, the organizational, and the political. On the personal level, self-determination is meant to be transformational. On the structural or organizational level, it requires fundamental change. And I'm only going to be able to mention a few things in describing this. And then on the final level, the political level, it's going to require a concerted national and I believe international movement uh, to increase the power of individuals with disabilities and uh, the power of the self-determination movement. On the personal level, for example, the only ones who can assist in helping a person plan are those who are invited. These plans must reflect a new set of quality standards which I'm going to go through quickly, but it's at the heart of what I want to leave you with uh, uh, today. On the personal and structural level, and this is one of the reforms, planning and budgeting are melded together into one. Uh, they're not separated. So then self-determination in the U.S. rests on these three pillars. A fundamental restructuring of the human service system, personal planning and budgeting that moves from services to supports for a meaningful life, and the political dimension then, uh, where I think we're way behind, we have so much more work to do. In terms of restructuring, some examples you're familiar with, uh, the use of fiscal intermediaries, where an individual's allocation gets deposited, 
and they take care of paying bills and making sure taxes and other issues are taken care of. Unbiased planning assistance, uh, and I think we all know what that might mean. We would like to see uh, individual brokers who are very well trained in self-determination begin to assist individuals. But at every step of the way, the individual with a disability has the right to hire and to fire any person who provides support. The movement from congregate to individual and community integrated settings is absolutely key and fundamental to the change as it is, I believe, in all of the countries. Individual budgets based on individual allocations is important. In the United States, the, one of the key mistakes that have been made now uh, for several years is if a person has an individual allocation, people are calling that an individual budget. And in the design of the line-by-line -line budget, they lose control. So I think the distinction between the allocation and the budget is extremely important. Something very important happened in January of 2014. The federal adoption of some of the principles of self-determination that we have been advocating. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the largest funding source in the US for what we euphemistically call long-term care, came out with new regulations for what constitutes living in the community and new regulations for what they call person-centered planning. You'll never hear me use the word person-centered planning because everybody says they do it and with a thousand meanings, it in fact has no meaning. Here's some examples of what they're saying has to be in place. And these are very unusual, especially for the federal government to do after pressure from uh, some of us. But a person living in the community has to have a landlord-tenant relationship. And it has to be in writing, and it has to mirror in all important ways uh, the same kind of tenant-landlord relationship of anybody else. Real integration, which is a huge issue for the provider agencies, Real integration in this case uh, means that the person has to be embedded in the community and can't be living outside the community and still receive community funds. They can have visitors at any time, night or day. Some of the little things are you know, extraordinary for an individual. Uh, they can have food and access to food any time of the day or the evening. They can have private, the means for private communication with people outside where they live. The personal planning, and I think I mentioned this, has to be conflict of interest free. 
So let me go to the key to what I think has to happen. Universal human aspirations. The first one, of a place to call home where the person with a disability has control over anyone who enters for any reason. Community membership, which means not passive belonging in the community, but active membership in organizations. And the pursuit of friendships and long-term committed relationships. And these latter two especially uh, a part of how we see health and safety. People who do not have long-term committed relationships are the ones who are most vulnerable. The pursuit of private income, and by the way, for working age adults, uh, we take the position uh, that there are no exceptions. And the last one, which is key to having real freedom in the community, is control over the means of transportation. We have two guidebooks we developed uh, to help people with this. The first one is real life quality standards, and the second one is creative individual budgets. The political issue I leave to discussions that we're going to have following this meeting. And hopefully, by reaching out to other countries uh, and individuals who want to collaborate on an international level, I think we can make some headway. In the United States, we have forgotten our history we were once a civil rights and human rights movement. And most people who work in human services today do not know that history. We cannot forget, and this is my last comment, our goals must be, because of all the intricate work that has to be done, we cannot forget that our goal is to be able to walk and wheel together as equals, to dine together as equals, to work together as equals, and finally, to love each other as equals. Thank you.